the question is, do you want to have all of the pie for the next few years? Or do you want to have a bigger pie, but give less of it to yourself, give more of it away to, for example, Twitch or to YouTube gaming? Hello and welcome. I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. In this video, I'm going to talk all about this thing that just happened. Mark Zuckerberg has sent out, I nearly said tweet then, a Facebook post talking all about how he's going to give 100% of the money that creators make to the creators for the next two full years until 2023. So that means that if a person that is watching you on Facebook decides to subscribe to your channel, you will get 100% of that revenue, minus, of course, obviously the tax implications and the processing fees that everyone has to pay, except for Mark Zuckerberg, who avoids tax. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> this is obviously quite a big deal. Uh, Facebook has been giving away that much to their creators for a long time now, and they've been eating away at market share for a little while. In this video, we're going to dive into some of the statistics around Facebook and make some comparisons in terms of the earnings. But we're also going to talk about some key points surrounding this that may or may not influence how you decide to go with your own streaming career. Facebook opting to give people 100% is not just a PR stunt. They are aggressively going after the gaming market, and I want to break down some of the the key points about this, including what the actual earning potential is going to be between Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook gaming. I have published an earlier video, and within the video, I talked about whether Harris Heller made the right move moving to YouTube gaming, where I discussed the actual earning potential of the different channels. But in this video, I'm going to go to a bit more of a deeper dive into the stats and stuff that you should be aware of. So if you do find it useful, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Like the video so that YouTube's algorithm loves me. Yeah, if you want to come say hi, I stream most days at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Let's do this. Okay, I'm going to refer back to an earlier tweet of Devin Nash's. It was made in January 22nd, 2021, so it's still pretty relevant, this. Obviously, it's a really important thing to note here. Pornhub, man, you're earning a lot of money if you're making porn, apparently, um, which is why I... Let's not, let's not talk about my responses to the tweet. <laughs> So as you can see here, Facebook gives $100 for every $100 earned to their creators. That will continue now for the next two years, which is good. They're providing some certainty to the people that may have directly moved over to Facebook or maybe considering directly moving over to Facebook specifically for that reason. And we'll get into some of the other growth factors that you may want to look at as well when making these considerations if you are considering making a switch. YouTube gaming's around about the sort of $70 per $100 mark. It's taking around about 30%. And guess what? Mark Zuckerberg has an absolutely massive, deep set of pockets, okay? What did you think I was going to say? So they're investing literally billions into capturing the market share of the gaming and streaming market. Oftentimes, companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, they're more interested in the market share of a situation rather than the monetization of a situation because a lot of the times you can figure out the monetization down the road. The point is getting market share is absolutely key. Growth of numbers is more important than profitability in the early days. Funnily enough, when Mark Zuckerberg put his information out on Facebook about the 100% earnings going to creators. Emmett Shear, who is the CEO of Twitch, made some announcements himself, but he was more talking about tips for running a company. He provided on Twitter a number of different tips that he would give to people if they were running large companies and just things that he's learned along the way. And one of the things that he learned reflected that sentiment of grabbing market share. I will link both of these posts below so you can look in more detail because there's actually some interesting stuff that Emmett Shear puts out here. He says here, and I'll click onto it. For internet companies, growth is more important than profit. It's very rare for a company to achieve massive scale of use and then die because they can't figure out the economics. There are some examples of this happening. Yahoo back in the 90s was one example and a number of other early dot-com companies. Normally the reverse is common. In other words, when you've got the scale, you can figure out the revenue models down the road. So we've established that Facebook is offering a very attractive incentive for creators to move and dedicate their time creating creating content on the Facebook platform. And bear in mind, if the content is bad, you will not get the users in this market. For streamers and the streaming market, content is always going to be king. Viewers will gravitate towards the best content that is out there. And for that reason, it's a logical strategy to incentivize good quality and high volumes of creators to join your platform. So Facebook's offering 100% of the money to its creators, where Twitch, by default, for affiliates, which represent most of the streamers on Twitch, there's something 
something like 1.5 million affiliates, something like 100,000 partners on Twitch, and the rest are such small quantities of viewers with sub 50 followers that they basically don't affect the data all that much on Twitch. 50% of the money from a subscriber on Twitch go to the creator, the rest of it goes to Amazon. That's a big deal, and that's massively different compared to Facebook. But it's not good enough to just look at this in a linear basis. We've got to think a little bit more laterally here. What's the actual potential for you to earn money, like $1 or $100 or a $1 million on platform one versus two versus three, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube gaming. Well, let's dive into some of the data here. So this is the Q4 2020 Stream Hatchet and Stream Labs article. I've referenced this in one or two of my other videos. I'll link the article in the description below. It's basically the most up-to-date data about the streaming market. On the face of it, Facebook is a small piece of the streaming market share pie. They have increased their market share and they're now sitting at just under 11% with Twitch holding 65% of the market share. And this is based on the total hours watched. It's not good enough for you to just have more people on a platform. If those people are not engaged, the number's basically meaningless, which is why they use total hours watched. Total hours watched is a strong indicator that the viewers there are engaged viewers and actually sat there properly engaging with the content that's there. And therefore, it's a more meaningful stat to use. So Facebook's got something like one-fifth or one-sixth of Twitch's market share and they've got less than half of YouTube's market share. So straight away here we've got an issue whereby the critical mass of viewers that are available by hours watched is massively in Twitch's favor. You're going to come across a much broader set of people that will be interested in your specific content on Twitch before YouTube gaming, before Facebook gaming. But again that's not the only picture as well. There's some other considerations we need to look at here. Let's talk about competitors. Total hours streamed here in Q4. 90% of the hours streamed in the streaming market were done on Twitch, which means that Twitch is a highly competitive market to enter into. If you look at this as well, YouTube gaming, only 4.1% of the hours streamed were on YouTube gaming and 5.7% were on Facebook. What can we actually take away from these two stats when you combine them together? It means that YouTube gaming gives the biggest potential for new audience members in terms of audience members per competitor, because if you divide the amount of competitors by the number of viewers or viewing hours as it were you're getting the biggest bang for your book on YouTube gaming. Facebook also has a really good ratio here with 5.7% of hours streamed on Facebook it indicates that there's a lot of struggling streamers on Facebook that are not getting the hours watched in the eyeballs but it still indicates to me that there's a low number of streamers on Facebook compared with the two other platforms in particular on Twitch. So a clear takeaway here is that you're not going to encounter as much competition on Facebook Facebook or YouTube gaming in particular, as you would do on Twitch. But remember here, you also need to have the eyeballs there and the critical mass to be able to watch the content, locate and discover the content too. That critical mass of viewers and eyeballs watched and hours watched from Twitch is a big deal. Now let's talk a little bit about growth here. So what direction are they moving in? This is Q3 in 2020 for October, November, and December. I'll just zoom into this a little bit. We can see that total hours watched is increasing with Twitch month on month. There's a small increase there. And as expected in December, you're always going to have a little bit more view time because it's more the holiday period. YouTube gaming's hours watched actually declined through those periods. It declined by around about 20%, it looks like. And in the same period, YouTube gaming's has increased significantly, something like 30 or 40% in that period. That doesn't look like much, but to go from 263 to 351, an 88 million hours increase within just a two-month period is huge. So Facebook is growing rapidly. Twitch is still growing and it feels like at the moment YouTube gaming is flatlining, although that might change with a few big name signings that they've recently had, for example, Harris Heller and so on. Just a very quick look at the actual hours watched in 19 versus 20. There's almost double the hours watched in 2020 over 2019. So the market in general is growing in size. And we can see from this image here that a lot of that growth came through the COVID periods in Q2 2020. Interesting. Interestingly, this graph here shows the number of hours actually streamed. So essentially the level of competition in raw number of hours streamed. Although we had nearly double the amount of hours watched in 2020 versus 2019, we didn't get nearly double the amount of hours streamed, which implies that the overall market is experiencing growth from a viewer point of view, but the growth of creators is not keeping up with the pace of viewers and eyeballs. So if you take away any one specific streaming platform, the overall entity of streaming, according to this
this data would imply that it's not as competitive 2020 as it was in 2019. However, I suspect that a lot of new streamers did appear in 2021. This data is also reflected within Twitch Tracker as well. If you look at the average current viewers, and this is only Twitch, bear in mind. If we go back just two points into 2019, 1.26 million average concurrent viewers. Zoom in a little bit on this. To the back end of 2020, 2.97 billion average concurrent viewers. That's nearly a threefold increase in viewers, but at the same time, the number of channels as is just a little bit over double the average concurrent channels live on Twitch. So at any one time, there's around about two and a half times as many channels live and nearly three times as many viewers on Twitch. So we can tell that the streaming market is growing and it's pretty clear that Facebook is growing very quickly, probably in part because they're offering very strong incentives for creators to move to the platform. But there's probably still further digging that we need to do here. Let's take a little look at actually how big Facebook really is and the landscape that they've got to work with in terms of the critical mass of users that they have. Here's some market insights on Facebook's page here. Again, I'll link the description below. They've got 350 million plus people that play instant games each month on Facebook. That's a huge amount of people that are interested in gaming in general. Although, let's be honest, being interested in gaming on a casual instant game versus actually seeing sitting and watching somebody play games or stream are two wildly different things. But there is a tangible link probably between the two. I just think it's not as important as probably the stat looks like it is. There are over half a million gaming groups on Facebook and over 230 million people are active in those groups on any given month within Facebook. So that shows that there are somewhere between perhaps 200 and maybe 350 million people within the Facebook sphere of influence that you use Facebook and are interested in gaming or are active in gaming channels. That's a pretty big market share of people that could potentially convert to viewers on Facebook, which definitely goes some ways to explain the growth from Facebook. It's also just worth noting this. It's an actual gaming report article, which again, I'll link below, but it just shows the incremental gamers since March 2020. It just shows the increase in people interested in gaming or using the gaming facilities on Facebook uh, per country. We can see pretty much across the board that there's at least least a 25 to 30% increase in gamers. So the gaming market itself is increasing significantly. The streamhatchet.com article here, which again references the same data that we've been looking at, just shows that Facebook gaming's average viewership is soaring, as they put it. This is obviously just the number of people that are viewing the platform at any one time. So it's the average concurrent. It's basically doubled in the course of less than one year from around about 250,000 people concurrent to 500,000 people concurrent. If you flatten that out on a quarter by quarter basis that's a really quite a steady growth that you're seeing there and just in terms of unique channels on Facebook as of Q3 2020 there were 267,000 Facebook channels versus nearly a million YouTube and 10.5 million channels on Twitch that is a lot of competition okay so I think you probably get the point by now Facebook is a massively rapidly growing entity if you stream on Facebook there's a chance that the growth will be there in the future but that perhaps from the get-go the critical mass isn't quite there to the same level as YouTube gaming or Twitch. What will this look like in the next year or two? It's pretty obvious that Facebook's going to continue to grow. But the thing is, Twitch in itself on the raw numbers in terms of the number of eyeballs watching Twitch is also growing. And because they're such a bigger market share platform to start with, their growth, even 5%, 10% growth for, for Twitch represents a significantly higher number of actual people on the platform. So we can't get lost too much in the percentages here. We do sometimes need to look at the actual raw quantity quantity of people on one platform versus the other. There's one other really important thing we need to talk about here. And this is kind of like the conclusions of what I'm saying here. Obviously, you can choose to stream on whatever platform you want. You can even try multi-streaming. You can stream across multiple platforms either at the same time, obviously at your own risk, or you can stream on one platform earlier in the week and a different platform later in the week. So you could trial different ones. I'm probably going to do this as a test subject purely so that I can provide some information and data to you guys. But the thing is, anecdotally, many people have the consensus that it is easier to earn money on Twitch than it is on Facebook gaming and it is on YouTube gaming. And this is because over the course of its 10-year life cycle, Twitch has cultivated an environment, almost a culture of generosity amongst its users, its viewers, and its streamers. People look out for each other a little bit more on Twitch. People tend to be a little bit more generous on Twitch, and it's a lot more accepted 
to gift, to donate, to give bits. It's a lot more acceptable to do all of that on Twitch than it is on the other platforms. Are people just inadvertently peer pressuring each other on Twitch to be generous? Or is this culture just a nice phenomenon that you've got with Twitch that just doesn't exist on the other platforms? Where I'm going with this is even though Facebook is offering 100% of the pie to its creators, it's widely accepted and the consensus is there that the pie on Twitch for any given streamer is going to be bigger. And there are many creators, for example, Harris Heller that have echoed this. Harris Heller's actually made the switch over to YouTube and he's already admitted that the potential for earnings on Twitch are higher just in terms of the culture, but not necessarily in terms of the future growth, which is why he's staying on that platform as things stand. So really, when you're looking at purely Twitch, YouTube and Facebook as options, do you want a big pie and have less of it? Or do you want to have a smaller pie and have all of the pie? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I'm really keen to know of any success stories of any people that have made the switch from any of the platforms to any of the others. Yeah, hopefully you found this insightful. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, take it easy and have a wonderful day.